this entire time, I think my mic was muted. Meh. Done, they. But... <laughs> Guess we'll start that over again. Hello, everybody. I'm Neon Ice Wings, and we are going to go on the magical journey of Ace Attorney here. The prerequisites are, I know Phoenix Wright, I liked him in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, I know some of the side characters, like Edgeworth, and then Maya, I forget her name, like her last name, but his little assistant that he gets in the second case, primarily because I played the first game on the DS like a million years ago. I know that there's like, I don't know, like a... I'm, I'm trying to find the right word for it, but, like, a game that's, like, in the Ace Attorney series, but happens in the past. With somebody that looks like Phoenix, but it's not Phoenix. And also not to be confused with the, like, the crossover game with Layton, Professor Layton, that takes place in, like, a medieval alternate universe. I don't know. Ace Attorney apparently gets wild. But yeah, I only really know the first game a bit. I think I've probably forgotten a lot by now. I only remember the vibes, as well as all the memes of... If it was almost Christmas, it wasn't Christmas. That keep coming up every time that it's like Christmas Eve. But yeah, I heard a lot of good things about the Ace Attorney games over the years. And aside from the first game that I played a billion years ago, I haven't really looked into it much. But since, well, the trilogy came out, let's -a go. Let's -a see. Oh, you get to choose Justice for All and Trials and Tribulations. We're, of course, going to play the original. Good God, it is a billion years old as well. Came out in 2001. Well, the original game was on the. Uh, Blah, 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 the Game Boy Advance and then just got remade for the DS, so blah, blah, blah. But let's go Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Episode 1, The First Turnabout. Play the first turnabout? Well, that's why I clicked the button, yes. Why would I click the button if it was not to play the game? <sighs> You killed somebody with the thinker? You fiend. Seeing this in HD is actually wild. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I I've got to find someone to pin this on. Why do you have a dot in the middle of your forehead? Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Nice art to start off with. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. In one second, I have to let the cat out. Because he's a he's a bastard who's like, I'm going to sleep on your desk, and then when you actually start doing something, I'm going to want out, even though you close the door. Meh. Bastard cat. He is a mean cat for daring to do that every single time. Every single time. And whenever I try to drag him out from under the desk so that he'd be like, come on, we both know that you're gonna we both know that you're going to want to leave the room. So why do you not want to leave right now, even though you're going to want to leave in like five seconds? <clears throat> but anyway, August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number two. Also, another thing that I do know is the wonderful music. The wonderful music of the Ace Attorney games. It's just so good. It's classic. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. Uh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? 
you mean you knew the defendant before this case? Wouldn't that be ever so slightly a bit of a, uh, what's the word, a conflict of interest? But at the same time, this is a wacky world where people are kind of assumed guilty and you need to prove their innocence. Which is dangerously close to reality sometimes. Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh! I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Uh. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I, I'm finished! I can't live in a world without her! I can't! I love the art in these games. Just over-the-top, twinkly eyes there. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Yes, we already saw this. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. <laughs> You know, this makes me wonder how the art, like, compares to the original, like, GBA and DS versions of these games. I just, I don't know, because there's an art to the, like, art styles of those games that I wonder if anything was lost transitioning to the HD, uh, more like hand-drawn digital portraits. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I own one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do! August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Yeah, this is basically just a tutorial. Very simple. At least it should be simple. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? I yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, hands shaken. Eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant of this case. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh! No. No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim... Uh, of course I know the victim's name! I, um, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Attorney's badge. Sid uh, Cindy's auto autopsy report. Time of death, 7.31, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. 
And we can even check out some profiles. Maya Fay, age 27, chief attorney at Fane Co., my boss and a very good defense attorney. Larry Butts, the defendant in this case, a likable guy who has been my friend since grade school. Cindy Stone, the victim in this case, a model. She lived in an apartment by herself. Winston Payne, the prosecutor for this case, lacks presence. Generally bad at getting his points across. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cinderblock, uh, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. Would be weird to be strangled with a blunt object, but I assume that's also possible. Just cut off the airway. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck, struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. We're just gonna... Yeah, it doesn't seem to have anything else to it. Good, good. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <coughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We worked great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what do you describe as generally what we mean by dumped? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. The victim apparently arrived at home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Hmm, <laughs> indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of women, woman this wa Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Probably stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Ugh. Mm. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Ah, uh, he went. What do I do? Have him answer honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, I was there. I went. 
Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. <laughs> That's a high-pitched objection. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime! Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit. <laughs> Frank Sawit. I love... <laughs> That's another thing that I know about the Ace Attorney games, is that they love puns for their, <laughs> like, character names. I love it. Uh, please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Sawit? Sawit? I still don't know why you've dot in your head. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes! Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in, in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Well, we already know a few, like, things that are wrong with it. He said that he didn't go in, but that he tried the phone in the victim's apartment. As well as he said that it was 1 p.m. despite the fact that the court record explicitly says that the time of death was 4 to 5. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawitz used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Electricity uh, to Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime, so the time of the murder in the testimony itself checks out. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. All right, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave? Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then what? Wi then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, Present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the R button, then point out contradictions in the testimony. All right, then I know exactly which one to do. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing. We don't... Well, I guess we could press. I don't think that, uh... Ah, save or load a game. I would like to save. Nice that we can save basically whenever. Uh, I... Let's press to uh, see what happens. Maybe. Hmm. I'll press on the proper one. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her up there. Dying. Unable to go inside. Thought to call police. Phone wasn't working. Plug phone. Press. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. 1 p.m. 
Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. The autopsy report declares you a liar! Uh, ah, I need to press X. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, oh, that! Oh, uh... This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you were found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh... Well, I, gee, that's a really good question! Great job, Wright. We put him on the spot. That's all... That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Witness testimony, the time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. On the television, you say, but blackout happened. Hmm, I see you heard a vi- A vase? You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right, you know what to do. I've got this one. Cross-examination. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Let's press. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. Oh, but you could not have heard the time. Because there was a blackout! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery! And this record proves it! You couldn't have heard a television or a video! Ah, I... well... Uh... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I... I found it quite puzzling myself, quite. Uh, ah! Wait! I remember now! Mr. Sawit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Witness testimony, hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That it must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. Press. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Because it has nothing to do with it being a clock. It's a statue! Wait just one moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? With your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay. That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. 
Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. But then he said that he saw the time. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes! Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction! Mm, indeed! The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah! Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that! I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock and the clo shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice! That was the sound you heard! Order in the court! Intriguing! Please continue, Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What? what what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... that... that day... I... I never... Look, I... the clock... I heard... No, I mean, I saw... I saw... <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you! I saw him! He, he killed her, and he should be burned! Burn! Give him death! I, I love to make him squirm. Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright? Your Honor? You claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think clear, carefully. B Your Honor, the sound Mr. Solid heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in the court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. You forgot one thing. Oh, what's he, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He's right. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it! We're so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You treat me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! I almost had him! Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. I mean, I could have pointed out the Paris trip. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Ah, I like how they kind of let her fall to the background there, just to bring her back. Me, I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock is three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? 
right? <laughs> I like how they keep doing that. Right, right? Can you think of a reason of why the clock was three hours slow? Yes, actually. The passport. Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support the claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Passport. Take that. <laughs> Take that. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> <laughs> then he just passes out. Order! Order, I say! This is a very nice intro. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. <laughs> Do they just have confetti ready on the fly? <laughs> That's hilarious. And with that, this court is adjourned. Do they just have confetti ready to go whenever? It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and struck her dead. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Definite Lobby, number two. Ah, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. We're gonna quickly save, because better safe than sorry. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good! Wait, no! I mean, bad! Bad, bad, bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever! Larry, she was a... Ah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry! Harry? Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks! I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever! Let's celebrate! Dinner, movie, my treat! Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, hey, I was the one who got you off the hook! Oh hey! Here, take this! It's a present! A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry. Are you so sure? Uh, squeeze me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. 
Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Would it be the clock itself, since it wasn't, like, a thing of status? It was a thing that she just kept? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? I'm going to assume that it's the statue. Check this out. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about the clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. In one bloody day! <laughs> Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not gonna pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I wouldn't be able to keep. Since that one went so quick, literally just 40 minutes, pro probably even less if we count the... everything else, a brand new episode has been added. Turnabout Sisters. Save your progress. Sure. <laughs> that is indeed a cellular bring. Hello, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely! And it's all your fault! <laughs> nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great! I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha, so what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now, you know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Did I accidentally click too fast? <laughs> that feels like a jump. <laughs> Can you come by the office tonight, say, 9 to pick it up? I'll be in the pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like, burgers! I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. All right! It's a deal! Okay, sis. See you soon. Yep. I'll be waiting, Maya. Ow! That is a piercing beep. Conversation recorded September 5th, 9.27 a.m. September 5th, 8.57 p.m. Fay & Co. Law Offices. Now, Miss Fay, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. 
Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho, ho, ho. You're not configure, cogniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Ho, ho. My dear Miss Fay, I'm so very sorry, but I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. Ah, they actually show the murder in that one, too. I figured... Red, white, blue. I figured that they would, like, not do that for that one. To up the ante on things. But granted, it's already pretty brutal for them to just go, Yeah, we're gonna kill your mentor. Second case. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Fane Co. Law Offices. Oh, I'm late. That's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Maya! No, Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Ah, we, we can examine. Right, there doesn't really seem to be much to. Interesting that it allows you to examine at this point. That smell. Blood! <gasps> Sis! Someone's there! Chief? Chief? CHIEF! What a way to start the second case. It's like, aha, kind of silly opening one with just the brutal murder at the start. And then it becomes personal. Who are you? Did she just pass us out? Granted, it is. <laughs> Granted, it would be. A bit of a brutal thing to just come in, see a dead family member, especially after she called him and was like, hey, come on over. The, stra I, the strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Utterly brutal. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then all too quickly, it began to fade. So finally she was cold. Chief. Gotta examine. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon. Again. Some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. They seem to be the remains of a glass of light stand. No clues here. Oh. It changes. The chief's chair. A simple functional design. Feels pretty good to sit in, too. There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel, a nice, luxurious palace. Chief. It's hard seeing her like this. But if there are any clues here... She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. The thinker added to the court record. Hmm. There's some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of glass li of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Glass shard added to the court record. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Huh? A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Maya's hand. Mia. It's not Maya. Mia. Who could it be? Except it says Maya. The word is written in blood on the scrap of paper. Ma Maya? Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. Receipt added to the court record. I find it funny that it's like added to court record even though it's not really a courtroom thing yet. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I better call the police. If I know what that girl was doing here. Oh wait. Slide? Oh! The Fanco ledger book. Everything is written in the chief's ultra-neat handwriting. It's a 
small office, but it makes a good bit of money. Right, I better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police! Please come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? Oh, that is definitely not the voice for you. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. The phone receiver is missing a few screws. I better not use it. Perfectly normal office desk. The chief had very, very particular policy about office decor. Spending big on stuff that clients use, but keep your own stuff simple. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. This is where she filed her case records and recent rulings. Well, we should probably move now. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on that sofa. Oh, I hope she didn't run on me. Don't scare me like that! Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Faye. Maya Faye? Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt? I never thought there'd be use for evidence like this outside of a courtroom. Tell me, uh, why is uh, your name written in blood? Before Maya died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. Th th that's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would she just write my name? Uh-oh. I've done it. And wee you wee you. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! And that's not a voice for you, either. All right, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? We got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great, just great. Maya. Wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me! Hey. This word my here mean anything to you? Um, that... that's my name. What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name! K killer? I'm not- Case closed! You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am! Yeah, in this crazy world, that- that tracks. At least they're not taking me, so I can do work. Maya's younger sister Maya... Again, I keep saying Maya for both of them. Mia's younger sister Maya was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6th, 9.07 a.m., detention center. I guess it makes sense because it was really late when... We were taken in. Ah, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Well, they think she is one, so... Oh! It's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's up to you. I better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes, I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no! I never thought... It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Is it going to re replay the... Oh, no, it's different. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. <laughs> so we crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh, sounds like it was fun. 
Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. Harsh, Mia! That's what she said. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. I think of the person who did this to Maya. Mia! Mia, it's not Maya! Brain! Brain keeps going just like, ah, I'm gonna just take that. I don't know. Yeah. I know. You should talk. I guess more about you. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with the outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. A acolytes? Like people in religious training? What do you, what's it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Day of the crime. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for her upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right, she said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear it in your, her own voice? Her own voice? Yes, I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it. Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. Well, let's talk about spirit mediums. So, you're an acolyte. Um, uh, medium in training. That's right. The Fey family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fey family? So, Maya was it? Mia, not Maya. For some reason, my brain sees that as like, ah, Maya. Because am I? My. I don't know why. Brain wants me to die. So Mia was into that this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her own career, she said. Her powers are first class too. I, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So, you're a real, honest-to-goodness spirit medium, with ESP and all that. Yes, in training. Well, can't you contact M Maya's... Mia. Mia. I don't know why. Every time I say the name, my brain is just like, Okay, we're gonna go with the first one. Which, that time, it was Mia. But then my brain was just like, No, what if we get it wrong again and switched lanes? Bleh. Well, can't you contact Mia's spirit, then? We can just ask her who killed her. I I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. <sighs> I thought that would be too easy. Your cell phone. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right! Oh, I just remember. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Ah, oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Maya's memo added to the court me record. Um... Huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. A and well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm... Of course I'll do it. Cause like... If my boss said, yeah, you should probably wait a few more years before you want him to uh, represent you, I shall honor my dead mentor's wish for her sister, especially since her, my, her sister said, yeah, go to this guy if you're in danger. I shall do it. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I, I see. Don't worry. Leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They are giving me until 4 this afternoon. The visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Oh, new stuff? Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. 
That's the thinker clockwork that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around nine. The lights were off and I could smell blood. But then I found her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Literally. Doesn't seem there's anything to examine. So I should probably go to Grossberg. Hmm. Because I doubt there will be anything at the Fanko Law Offices, but we might as well check just in case. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal! No trespassing! Um, uh, sorry, don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright! How could anyone mistake me for Larry? I <laughs> guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer! And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... Detective Gum... <laughs> Suede Shoes! Suede Shoes! Gumshoe. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right, at your service. Hang on! That's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal! Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here! Yes, sir. Uh, be right there! Um, <clears throat> uh, you're her lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you'd better do it quick. Whew, he thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. Huh. Well, let's talk about Mia. About Miss Faye. Did you ha do an autopsy? Hmm? You want to know the results, eh? Now, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. All right, all right, you can see the report, but that's all. Time of death at nine, and she uh, did say that she got there at nine, didn't she, Blug? And Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you ain't gonna win. Well, why do you say that? The city's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Let's talk about Edgeworth. Prosecutor Edgeworth? That's right, pal. Mr. F Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of course I do. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him sound barely human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he began prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. I don't think we have anything to show him, because we have the thinker, the note that he already knows of. We have the, re the report. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and save, because why not? And I, because I don't really think there's any reason to show Gumshoe anything. Because there's the broken shards of glass, the receipt, which I know the receipt's gotta play a role in this because we'll actually use the receipt part of the receipt, probably. I don't think there's a reason to give the memo to him, because that's just the conversation to delay. Well, I guess that is... Let's see. Nope. Then let's move. Let's go to Grossberg Law Offices. That's a nice painting back there. September 6th. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Yeah, we're gonna examine. You should note that the desk is very, like, uh, big and, like, fancy. A solid maho <laughs> mahogany. My desk is made out of mahogany from Melchior 7! The wood's been polished to a deep luster. Nope, we already, we already did it. Expensive-looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive-looking books. Hmm, funny. 
They don't look like they've ever been read. That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The old paint is so thick it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. An expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. A table for clients. Hmm, an elegant ebony case, and if I'm not mistaken, that lighter's made of solid gold. I and mean, I can tell someone here's got money to burn. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there is anything else. Guess we gotta move back to the, uh, detention center, I guess. Hey! What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry. I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm. I better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. But we did! I guess we go back to the law offices. Guess we go back? Maybe I need to examine something properly and he'll appear. Books that are never read? Nope. Hmm. Maybe I can present you with the phone conversation. I was wondering, did you see Maya, Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure, I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. <laughs> tell him... I wonder what tell him straight would do. Hmm. I shall save to be safe. Tell him straight. If I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me. Something the matter? Oh, uh, no, it's just, you know, detective. Nope. I know nothing, pal. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. The cell phone holds all the little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Uh, you're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Oh, here. You can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call records in there, after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Maya's cell phone received from Detective Gumshoe. So that's what I needed to do. Check the courtroom record to hear the recorded conversation. I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You all done, pal? Um, yes. Thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait! One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to the witness. Anyway, you'd better not! No influence in the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Ah, the witness, yeah. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness. Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already, then? <laughs> You're trying to loyally tricks on me now. She's not going outside her room until the trial. So she's still at the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try and get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Yep, and here we can see the entire thing. Well, I guess we shall move. Maybe I'll present the phone record to her? Let's see, can we talk about anything? Your family. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young, and I don't know where my mother is. Don't know? So she could still be alive? Your mother. The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. It was a man and he... he... he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer and she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. Your mother's enemy. So who was this man who, um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir, everyone was talking about it apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. 
Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try and contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved, we thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. The police's consultation with the medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud and the media jumped on it big time. She and my mother became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. White? Hmm. I guess present the... Let's present the phone, I guess. Hey, got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? Yeah, maybe this will provide important context. Maya's eyes closed. She listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. Thank you. Well, nothing else. We'll head back to the Grossberg. Doesn't seem like he's here. Nope, we're not gonna examine. To Gatewater Hotel! September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, Don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Tee <laughs> hee. Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Oh, let me get fresh enough so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. witness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine that one. Ha 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 ha. That's going to be you, Mr. Wright. That is going to be you. Well, time to examine. Let's look at the weird thing. There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? No touching! Oh, bad boy. You really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside that drawer. Well, let's talk since we can't exactly look without making her go insane. All right. What you witnessed. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Ooh, observe, incident, you sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with big vocabulary. Um, better not encourage her. Er, you know that thing that occur, uh, happened the other day, the bad thing. What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it, pretty please? Let me see, um, well, dream on. If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy, Miss May. Um, could you just... Who exactly are you? Ooh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? No! Oh, hey, I'm just doing my job here! <laughs> you know you're cute when you bluss. Bluss, blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um, <laughs> right, can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no. <laughs> and you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh boy, this room. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Ooh, what an amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm a, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage, hmm? Miss May doesn't like nosy little lawyers, hmm. Oh, boy. Late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Faco Law Office's building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. Ah, a still scene painting. Wait, should that be still life? Whatever. One of those is hanging on the wall. The flowers are fake, as expected. I know sunflowers and tulips, but that's about the extent of my floral knowledge. A bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must be staying with her. Hmm, what's inside, I wonder? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> I like that, but there's like, nope, you can't do that. Guess maybe head back to the Grossberg? Hmm, seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait it here for him to come back. Ahem! 
And if that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throat I've ever heard. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm, that badge on your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy? How come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm, something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grosberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Faye. Ah, yes. Maya Faye, go on. Hmm, why the strange reception? Ah, cha-cha. I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. Nope, it's quite impossible. But wait a sec. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? <coughs> anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, I end of discussion. What's going on here? He refused me before I even had a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? Your refusal. How can you just refuse like that? Please, tell me why you won't take the case. <coughs> well, you see, it's just I'm busy, you see. But the client is Maya Faye... Ma Mia. Mia Faye's sister. <coughs> Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course, I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. But what do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer with their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I... I cannot say. I beg your pardon. But could you leave? Now. I've nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? What about that painting? That's... quite a painting. Ha <laughs> ha, you noticed? It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't even interested. It's not for sale! I'm not buying! Jeez! What about Mia? How did you know Mia Faye? She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. Is there anything I'd bother to present to him? I don't think he'd care about any of these. Maybe the autopsy report? Very sorry, but I've got nothing to say regarding this matter. Very nice that you can just quickly go through it. Well, he has nothing to say. We shall save, because why not? Spastic saving saves the days, and... Well, nothing else, I suppose. We go back to the detention center. Ah, just in time to break her heart. Hi, uh... Oh, you're back! Did you find the lawyer? Um, well... Well, see, just be honest. I really don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? <clears throat> I see. I've been abandoned then. Just a little bit longer now before the state-appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? Defend Maya! I've made up my mind! I'm gonna defend you whether you want me to or not! W why Why? Well... Somebody else is the culprit! You aren't the culprit! Someone else is! How do you know? I, um... I have a hunch. Given the evidence, it would be easy to assume that Maya was the killer. But there's something about this whole thing that smells fishy. That witness's strange behavior. Was that all an act? And the way that lawyer refused to help out Maya. But more than all that, she has no one left to help her. Nothing is more sad or more lonely than that. I know. I've been there. 
a long, long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. <laughs> well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Ah, she smiled at least. She looked like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes! And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Let's see. Then back to the Gatewater Hotel I go. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are? Ah, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Uh, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait. No, hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit! I almost forgot! Ah! You came back quick! Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined M M Mia and Maya's father. Mother, not father. Blah. I, my brain was so happy to have actually said the names correctly in the correct order, and then it just had to go and jump off a cliff anyway. Could it be a coincidence? There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half-open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside! What do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? There's definitely something suspicious about this, Miss May. Why would you have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story about behind all this. I know it. All right. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, bellboy, still there? Uh-oh, time to scram! I look forward to tangling with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court! To be continued. Wow, they even provide a nice, stable stopping point. And you know what? I'm feeling oddly tired. It feels like I've done a lot in this game, even though we've only done, like, one and a half cases, it seems. But, yeah, this is very fun. I like it. I like the characters and world. I can't wait to see how just extensively deep the courtroom shenanigans will get later. Ba ba da ba 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 ba. I do believe that that will be it for now. A bit of a shorter stream, but again, for some reason I feel tired and this feels like accomplished. I don't know. It feels nice. But yeah, Phoenix Wright just feels like a very nice game. Nicely paced. It has a nice feel to it. I really need to check out more of these, like, visual novel type games, like Danganronpa, and, like, or, like, just various different games in general. I've been meaning to get to Disgaea. There's just so many games to get to. But, yes. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, edited content on Neon Icy Wings, and where all these streams go, the Neon Icy Games channel, which I also stream to, with along with my Neon Icy Wings Twitch channel. If you want other things from me, like art, I have various 
diddly d websites like DeviantArt, Tumblr, and uh, Newgrounds, and Twitter all linked in my link tree, which should be linktr.ee slash wings. It's been a bit since I actually looked at it. They format it weird, but man, it works as a compilation of here's where I be. Social media is complicated, yeah. But yes. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.